As you may know, almost every modern application nowadays needs a database. And luckily for us, with Vapor, you can easily create and manage databases directly from the Vapor UI or from the Vapor CLI. In this episode, we are going to use the Vapor UI. And to get started, you need to go to Resources Databases and then click on Create Database. Now, as usual, when you create a resource in Vapor, you need to choose the network where you want to place this database. And normally, it should be the network where you intend to put all the resources that will connect to your application and environment. Then you need to choose a name, and we are going to pick my database uh, for this example. Next, you have the type. And the type offers you a couple of options and of course the first decision you need to make is the engine if you want MySQL or if you want Postgres and then you need to decide the type of database if you want something more uh, like a fixed site database or if you want serverless and the difference between those types really relies on the type of database you need if you need a database where the, const the, the workload will be constant to that database, you probably want to choose fixed size databases. But if the workload of your database will not be constant, and if you have like uh, periods where your database will have heavy workload, but most of the time your database will not have activity at all, probably serverless is a good choice for you. In this example today, we are going to choose MySQL 8 Fixed Size Database. Alright, next. Because we have selected a Fixed Size Database, we need to select the server specs and the maximum disk size. And I usually recommend people to start slow on the server specs because they can scale up the database in the future if they want to directly from the Vapor UI. And in terms of disk size, today for this example we are going to choose 25 gigabytes. Next, we have the backup retention window. And this is also an important decision to make because with Vapor, database backups are automatically performed and you can actually restore a database to any point in time down to the second, but that restore must happen within the backup retention window. And this value is in, in days, and for this example today, I'm going to choose just one day. All right, then you also need to decide if you want to make your database public or private. Now, just keep in mind that when you make your database private, um, Vapor will automatically attach a NAT gateway to your application network. And this by itself, it costs $32 a month. Uh, and in addition, if you plan to connect your local machine to the database, uh, that also requires a jump box, which has a cost associated to it as well. So if you don't have a real reason to keep your database private, just leave it public and that will also work as expected. And finally, you can also enable storage encryption if you want to. This is something that most applications don't need, but in case you do, keep in mind that you may face some performance penalties with it. Once you click on Create, Vapor will display you the master user database credentials. Do please save those credentials in the safe place because in the future, if you want to connect to the database from your local machine, you will need those credentials. And it looks like our database quickly become available and ready to use. So, just like any other resource in Vapor, the only thing we need to do to connect this resource to an environment is add over to the terminal, open our project, add over to the vapor.yaml file, and then you place the key database with the name of the database. Now, because we have attached a database to this environment, we may want as well to migrate the database to the new schema, to the update schema, every deployment. 
and for that we need to use the deploy hooks. Migrate, just like that. Once you have updated the deploy hooks, you can now issue a new deployment for this environment by typing vapor deploy staging. And while our deployment is being done, let's head over to the Vapor UI so I can show you a little bit more about databases and Vapor. When we click on a database we just have created, we can see multiple details about our database. In addition, we can manage database users directly from the Vapor UI. And if you want to, you can set up alarms so you know when you need to scale your database. As example, when you click on Configure Alarm, you can set up Alarm for, for example, the free disk space. When you finally need to scale your database, you just have to head over to the top right and click on Scale. On the Scale Database form, you can update the server specs or change the disk size. Just keep in mind that scaling the database will result in downtime. Therefore, you may want to put your application in maintenance mode before doing this operation. You can put the application in maintenance mode directly from the Vapor UI. Now, as mentioned before, database backups are performed automatically and you may restore your database to any point in time by clicking on Restore. Now, the way that Restore works on Vapor is that a new database will be created with the contents on the point in time you specify. Now, keep in mind that the time you specify must be within the backup retention window and you can update this value as well directly from the Vapor UI. Also in this view, you have database metrics, the maximum number of concurrent connections, average connections, CPU utilization, and free disk space. All this information and metrics are very valuable eventually when you are evaluating if you need to scale up your database. Now, let's see if our deployment is completed and we can see that our project got deployed successfully and in addition we have created a test route that displays a new created user on a database every time we visit the vanity domain. So if we visit the vanity domain we can see a new user being created every time we refresh our website. And that's it about databases on Vapor.